is Omkar Naik. Omkar, how are you, sir? I'm good. Thank you, David. This is long overdue, and it's good to see you. I know. We planned to do this months ago, and then the pandemic hit, and we had to cancel an in-person one, which was a shame. But I pivoted. I'm, I'm now, I'm, now I'm virtual. I am so happy. I'm so happy you're staying safe as well. Oh, uh, yeah. And you reminded me that it was exactly one year ago that you and I were in Japan. Uh, we went to a baseball game. We explored Tokyo, and uh, that was those. It seems like a lifetime ago. Seems like a lifetime ago, and a lot of lifetime of events ago. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What have you been doing recently? Uh, well, I moved uh, from our north central region to a healthcare vertical, and I am now the specialist taking care of data and AI for our health solutions customers. Oh, interesting. Tell me, what's uh, Microsoft doing? in uh, in terms of the healthcare world? So one of the uh, things that I'm really excited about with the recent announcements is the first and only industry vertical uh, for healthcare, which is we're calling it the Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare. So what in short, uh, David, it is, is it's, it's, a, it's a continuum of our um, solutions uh, that brings in the common data model with power apps, and dynamics and teams coming together to create this workflow for our providers to begin with to find and work with the patients in bringing together a 360 view as they as they start searching from the time uh, booking an appointment all the way through going through the hospital discharging coming back home and for caregivers to take a um, take care of them and as they get recovered, you get this complete enhanced picture uh, in a single view. So Microsoft is building this uh, this system that allows people to record all this or what are we what are we providing? So we're providing uh, uh, many different services um, coming together. So Dynamics, Power Apps and Teams. Um, as an example, Epic uh, is the first uh, customer that's that's uh, tapping into our uh, Microsoft for Health, wherein they're bringing in and utilizing Teams with their Orchard application hmm. uh, so that people can be able to utilize telemedicine and telehealth uh, platform there. Now, the way we're doing this is, is not only by bringing in trust and security with this, uh, with Azure, but also tapping into Azure's Fire Service, which is the health interoperability uh, protocol. And uh, um, this essentially brings in many different layers and providers and services coming together um, in a single um, in a single op uh, common operating platform. There. What uh, so fire service is an interoperability protocol. What, what exactly does that mean? So what it means is when you have different types of data and services uh, built and run by different providers, it's hard for patients and others to. Uh, manage and look at their data as they go between the providers uh, across. Now, what this fire will do is trying to create this industry standard where everybody can tap into each other's and now all of a sudden your health records, your whole health ecosystem becomes uh, interoperable, interoperable for payers to providers to processors all at the same time. So is this kind of a data schema? for interchanging the, it, in a way that everybody, everybody understands. And it is, it is, and it's run by the, and you tap into APIs uh, to access the APIs. those. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, tell me a little about uh, what's happening in Azure with healthcare. Well, uh, Azure is leading in healthcare. Um, uh, we have uh, the highest market share, but with what we've done, uh, particularly what we've seen through COVID is that it's not only transformed and accelerated digital transformation across industries, but particularly in healthcare, uh, you got double hit uh, for the providers. Uh, A, um, all of a sudden, um, there was a bulk of load um, on the hospitals, nurses, and caregivers to provide care in a safe way uh, to the COVID patients, but also at the same time, 
uh, the revenue generating component for hospitals, which is the elective surgeries, dropped by 70%. So this is where uh, most of the hospitals make revenue. And all of a sudden, when 70% of their revenues drop off, they're running at a very low margin, but at the same time, their costs went up. Uh, oh, their their um, costs went up not only with the patients uh, providing, but also the different steps they have to take to protect their caregivers as well. So what Microsoft is doing in, in healthcare is bringing in the cloud for healthcare, wherein uh, we're trying to ma better manage the patient engagement there, better bring in uh, uh, empowering the health team. So this is where you um, accelerate health teams ability to coordinate in a secure environment and safe, uh, simplify complex uh, workflow management there. And then at the end, also giving them um, with operational insights and improving clinical outcomes. So by bringing and connecting data from disparate sources and creating insights to predict risk and help improve uh, patient care, quality assurance, increase operational efficiencies, all within the REAM of uh, Azure certifications of, of HIPAA, HITRUST, and others that are um, uh, quite essential in running business. Uh, you mentioned a lot of goals there, like uh, the workflow management, improving patient care, quality assurance, empowering health team. Um, but are there are there specific services inside of Azure that are geared, that are targeted specifically at the healthcare industry? So we're looking at when you come when it comes to uh, Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare, you have uh, it's it's a solution stitched together with Dynamics 365, okay. uh, coming together with Microsoft Teams and Power Apps in in creating this managed workflow, all with the common data model, uh, tapping into Fire. Okay, so in that workflow, is that is that something that we provide, or is that something we just provide the raw tools for other people to so build? We, so we provide, you know, as with Microsoft, we provide the raw tools and then we have this uh, vast ecosystem of partners that can be able to bring in tailored solutions to it. So so if you're looking at a personalized care to creating a, a care coordination, uh, you it all brings in together with with uh, uh, with all of our partner system coming together as well. OK, well, what about guidance and best practices and ways to deal with this that, that are really particular to the healthcare industry. That is correct. So, um, so you know, when it comes to, you're right. And and to add to that complexity, David, each country would, you know, has their own way of uh, managing the health solutions. Um, so there comes in the complexity of, of bringing the solution together, bringing in the uh, center of excellence, so to speak, for, for the healthcare. Uh, that is why we not only run healthcare as a vertical within our regulated industry portfolio, but also now that we have uh, uh, healthcare for cloud, we're all bringing that together with the goal of Microsoft's expertise, but also working with uh, various different customers within that region to enhance their uh, business as well. Hmm. And, and you're working directly with customers. You already mentioned Epic, which by the way has the coolest campus that I've seen in the Midwest. Uh, I've been out in Madison. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I have heard of it. I'm, I'm looking forward to go there once all this uh, COVID craziness oh, ends. It's, it's beautiful. I think it's an old farm and they've spread out over the course of this thing and they have things like, they call it the galactic headquarters instead of oh. the <laughs> world headquarters. Uh, but um, but anyway, are you, what kind of things are you are you building for customers? So as an example, we're, we have the health bot um, we have, uh, so this is where uh, people not only can can um, work with the hospitals and scheduling. If you go to CDC um, and start uh, um, interacting with the bot for your COVID symptoms, that's built with the Microsoft uh, bot for healthcare. Um, oh. We have different AI what, what, models. What, and what, what does the bot for healthcare do? So it, it does two things. Um, with the CDC app in this case, you it's a symptom checker for COVID. Um, so if you if you go to CDC website and start interacting with the bot for your COVID system uh, symptoms, it's built on Microsoft's bot framework. Mm -hmm. um, on the health bot side, you can not only uh, the payers and providers, so doctors, offices, um, hospitals can not only schedule uh, the uh, patients' uh, next appointments, but also can be able to 
utilized by uh, processes and payment processors, um, insurance and others. So, so that's the sort of the work that um, any intelligent assistant sort of works um, with our health bot is no different in that sense. Now, uh, on top of that, we also have um, healthcare apps, uh, portals and connectors and dashboards that are readily available within our teams uh, and workflows and templates that all of these come together in bringing in a total um, workflow management system there. Oh, and so we, have, the we actually built we built some some apps and some uh, workflow templates that people could yeah, we have yeah we have uh, solution frameworks that people can use to tackle along. Um, now, where all of these sit on top of is your Microsoft 365, Dynamics, Power Platform, and Azure all coming in together. Right now, as you look at mixing these two and bringing the solutions to life. We're looking at our vast majority par partner ecosystem to enable those. Hmm. OK, I, if I, I want to paraphrase what you just said. Uh, Microsoft is providing the raw tools for building these solutions. The partners are are kind of gluing those tools together, assembling those tools together to build a solution specific to a healthcare partner. That's that's kind of the ecosystem there. And of course, the healthcare providers are consuming that and implementing it and um, making the world safer. Is that, is that, have I got the, the rules correct there? That is, that is correct, David. Okay. Um, and uh, what kind of projects are you working on? Are you, are you at liberty to talk about that? Uh, well, we're working with, uh, um, so I'm part of our health solutions uh, industry. Um, while I can't, I cannot dive into specifics of the work okay. that's going on due to confidentiality. Sure. Um, one thing to know is that uh, healthcare for cloud is a specific SKU package. So it's, it's in, you know, it's its own license um, that customers can utilize for, uh, you know, for $95 per user that brings in all of these services combined together and where necessary in case of uh, uh, health bot as an example or our That's cognitive cool. services that goes into our azure uh, metered services oh cognitive services uh, i'm a big fan of cognitive services but is that what's what's specific to healthcare and cognitive services well um as an example um uh with the natural language uh, processing uh, the idea behind the use of cognitive services is how can a doctor, nurses can spend more time with the patients and less time on the computer chart typing and charting notes. And that uh, uh, with the cognitive services can enhance and improve the patient outcome, but also more importantly, the patient satisfaction. Um, one of the big, re big things that patients have always talked about is when they go to the doctor, uh, the doctor has spent more time typing than listening to what I had to say. Yeah. By bringing um, our speech to text uh, and, and other sentiment analysis and all these data um, text analytics, everything coming together, you can not only free up the doctor's time in, in uh, charting, but spend more time with understanding what the customers or, or the um, patients, so to speak, the pain points are. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like you're getting into this at a good time as uh, healthcare is becoming more and more important with the current pandemic. Um, is there anything that we haven't covered that we should? I think where uh, we're going with healthcare is rather interesting. Um, and what COVID has done is just accelerated some of that work. So as an example, um, what COVID has done is, is we went from identifying um, what bothers the humanity, what what decreases the lifestyle, but um, in this case, the disease, and bringing out a vaccine in a record time. So this meant um, the pharma companies, the clinical trials team, the the hospitals that are um, that enrolled in the clinical trials, the patient that take the clinical trials and go out in life and still be tracked as 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 to what the side effects and all have to all come together um, and digital and technology is what what enable to happen. Now behind all of this is this massive data crunching from looking at uh, the DNA in creating an RNA vaccine um, by Moderna, Pfizer and others 
Um, it involved a lot of not only data crunching, but various different teams, regulators, all coming together in record space and record time. And this um, by by you know utilizing cloud in many different ways, it just accelerated the possibilities of what we can do in making the humanities life better. Um, where can people go to get more information about Microsoft Cloud? What is it? I, I don't want to say it correctly. The um, Microsoft Healthcare Cloud? Mm -hmm. Healthcare Cloud, Cloud for Healthcare. Cloud for Healthcare. Um, <laughs> the best way to go is aka.ms slash healthcare. Um, it takes you directly to Azure Healthcare. Um, there's quite a number of uh, um, if you if you are like me who consumes uh, information by video or or documents, uh, YouTube has a number of Microsoft uh, on on the Microsoft channel. We have a number of healthcare um, uh, videos out there to learn. We can also go to our uh, just generic aka.ms/azure and within industry you can uh, look at the healthcare offerings there. Okay, I actually went to health. I must have spelled this wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. I am getting an access denied when I go to aka.ms slash healthcare. Okay. How about uh, aka.ms slash Microsoft Cloud for Healthcare? Microsoft Cloud, Cloud for, health for Healthcare. And that works. Okay. Okay. It's actually, it is shorter than the, it's a long aka MS URL, but it's shorter than this uh, long SharePoint site. And there's tons it, of it, links in there. Yes. Yeah. And for uh, folks that are internal to Microsoft, uh, we have a number of collateral. You can go to aka.ms slash smarter health. S M A R T T E R health. Smarter health. Let's try that. And it is, uh, I got in there as well. Uh, and Perfect. what is smart health contributor responsibilities? Use cases. That's that's really interesting that mm -hmm. we're actually using here. Mm -hmm. Using things like uh, Teams and Flow must be an older one. Those are now what uh, yep. Power Automate Power and, and uh, Power BI. Interesting stuff in here. Yeah. And the cloud for healthcare is now GA as of October 28th. So everybody uh, within the provider side can be able to tap and access this. Um, when you say it's GA, are you talking about just the documents are GA or the services themselves? No, the services themselves are GA. So they are generally available um, as of October 28th. We went into preview in May, um, announced that uh, um, Ignite when Satya spoke about it, and October 28th is when we uh, GA the product. Uh, okay, good. And then uh, to be clear, this is uh, this is a service, and there's a $95 is that per month fee. Is that per user? Per month per user. Got it. Um, um, not in, you know the best is to talk to your um, account executive. Oh right. Um, if you got a million users, then maybe maybe that would go down a little bit. I would imagine. <laughs> Um, great. Uh, anything else? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm really excited about the possibilities of what healthcare um, can do, um, and also how Microsoft is relentlessly pursuing yeah. um, the benefit of humanity there. Yeah, obviously, an important time for that. It's always an important time for that, but especially now during a pandemic. Omkar, thank you so much for your time, and I hope you and your family stay safe. Thank you, David. I hope you too as well. What brings us together in this realm of the world is is technology, and and what brings people together is the friends and memories they create. Now, together in this show, technology and friends, uh, it's just two good things coming together, two of all of our collective passions.